Jim Farmer, Georgia Voice. How you doing today? Pretty good. How are you? Good. Nice talking to you. Enjoy the, the film. I'll watch it this weekend. Oh, thank you. Can you tell me a little bit about your interest in Frida and your decision to make this film? Um, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I'm one of the, those Frida groupies that discover her when I, when I was a young woman and yeah. my obsession with her just grew and I learned all about her life. And, you know, I like to say that I really always saw myself in her paintings, even though they were self-portraits of her, but my emotions were very much reflected back at me through her art. And, and I decided to make this film because I knew and I, when I revisited material that I had read a long time ago, I really felt her voice in, you yeah. know, some of the quotations. And I knew that the, that she could carry some of her story. I just didn't know how much she kind of, through the creative process, she kind of like took over the storytelling, which was amazing. But I wanted to have like a very present, you know, present day feeling of telling her story. And I knew that she could, you know, that we could give her the mic and she could share a lot of of it with us. Um, it was just like a really happy surprise that she could really tell us everything. So, yeah. Uh, my next question I, I was going to ask you, but the fact that, you know, you're able to use so much of Frida's own words here, which, which I think is spectacular. But, but did you, I mean, when you started researching this, researching this, did you have any idea you were going to be able to use all this? Um, we knew that she had talked a lot about moments in her life, and and we knew that there were a lot of you know archival sources that we could look into. Um, yeah. I thought that I was gonna probably rely on other people's voices, but I always wanted to use you know first person accounts of her life so i only wanted to you know bring in voices of those people that loved her and the people that knew her and the people that were present in her life when those things happened and and then you know i have the most amazing production team that did so much research and collected all of her writings because they're not in one single place. We follow the yeah. academic work that other people had done in the past, but then we just, you know, just got gather everything that there is to be gathered of Frida's writings. And when we started reading it, it was just such a wonderful experience. Yeah. How long did you work on this? So I think the idea came about about three years ago, um, okay. like the seed of the idea. Um, I, think, I think production took about a year and a half from beginning to end. So from research, starting research to, you know, finishing the film. So, you know, for documentary timeframes, it actually happened quite quickly. Sure. So th this is your directorial debut? It is. I've been at this for a while. <laughs> so I don't feel like a newbie, but I am definitely a new director. What was that? What was the process of directing your first project? Um, it was, you know, at times daunting, but I um, tell myself that I made the best decisions I made were at the very beginning of the process where I chose my team and I was able to bring in amazing collaborators and then we really made the film together. You know, they, they came in to support the vision that I had and then we worked together to put the story, you know, to build the story together. So it is, you know, film is a collaborative art form. It, that's what it is. Wait, as you were doing your research, what are some things that, you, that surprised you the most that you might not have known about Frida? Going in. So, you know, when I said obsession, <laughs> I mean obsession. Like I had read, you know, I think more than a few books about her when I was young. So I knew a lot about mm -hmm. the details of her life, but I hadn't really heard it directly from her. So that was a surprising yeah. thing, like to just be able to like, you know, really understand, for example, her fragility at times, or, you know, really hear her um, sense of humor. She was a very sarcastic woman and used a lot of flowery language to describe sometimes situations and people that she was criticizing. So, yeah. so that was, that was really fun. Um, you know, always to hear it from the original material and from the person itself. There's, there's always, um, 
intimacy and a closeness that you get and you really get a sense of the person in a much deeper way. Okay. Frida was very open about her bisexuality. Can you sort of talk about Frida being such a queer feminist icon? Yeah. I mean, she is for, you know, she was very open about it. She put it in her paintings and she talked to, you mm. know, um, you know, she talked about, I mean, she sent all these letters and, and, and talked about it in her private, like, close community. And, and there are pictures of her, obviously. There's some film of her where, you know, that, that attraction is just shown publicly. And we mm -hmm. really wanted to express that in the same way as she just put it out there. It was just, it was there. Like, she didn't shy away from it. But she was also not trying to, like, explain it or defend it in, in any way. She was just expressing it very naturally. And I think that, yeah. that that's just, like, a beautiful thing. And that's what we wanted to capture in the film. One thing that was, actually, this is one thing that was surprising. The pictures that you see of her... Um, you know, with a man's suit um, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, her hair back, um, looking very masculine. Uh, those pictures were taken as family. They were family pictures that they were, the entire family was taking. And she just, okay. you know, she dressed like that for that. And those pictures were taken by her father. Wow. Which I, I just found amazing and fascinating, uh, you know. But she had, she had that space to really show exactly. herself yeah i think you have time for one question i mean it was so unfortunate she that frida was in an era where her work really wasn't appreciated or seen the way it is but can you sort of talk about the fact, the fact that she is so iconic now but during her day i mean her work wasn't really known dead she wasn't known she was known as a figure in mexico but it wasn't yeah. about her it, it wasn't because of her art it, be, it, it was because of you know she was kind of a celebrity and, and a figure in Mexico being Diego Rivera's wife and, and being who she was, right, in public and how she presented herself. But her art really wasn't well known. Even after her death, people that were doing, that were, you know, trying to study her, you know, were looking for the people that owned her paintings because they were in private collections and people didn't know where her paintings ended up. Um, exactly. And a lot of those paintings were bought as favors to Diego Rivera. They weren't bought because, you know, people wanted to, like, get her art. It, they were, you know, yeah. they were buying it because they were friends of Diego. So it's just amazing. I think that, you know, I think it's because they're so private. Like, they show the private lives of, you know, the emotions of a woman. And our society doesn't see that as important. We ourselves, women, sometimes don't see that as important and we don't talk about it, right? We don't think that, that our pregnancies are important to talk about, that our miscarriages are important to talk about. We just live without pain sometimes or we live without passion sometimes or our pleasure and we just don't talk about it and we just keep moving forward. And, and that's what she did. She made her private life so important and her private feelings so important that she put them on paintings. So I think that, you know, it's been women later on that have discovered her and, and we connect with her because, you know, she expresses things that are so close to our, our lives and, and sure. ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations. I'm, I'm so happy for you that the film is going to be on Prime Video March 14th and reach such a wide audience. So congratulations. It's been lovely talking to you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Matikar.